We're back. It's episode 13 of the fucking ridiculous podcast. Um, thank you for joining. I am wearing my sunglasses today because I am really, really struggling to get my eyes to open. And um, I, I just think it's going to save us all some some discomfort if I just keep them on. So um, sorry if that's distracting to you if you're watching, but if you're just listening, it makes no difference to you. Couple of shout outs for the week. Harry B. going to UVA to swim. Our family could not be prouder of you. That is so awesome. Just so impressive. Way to go. Two early birthday shout outs to, or late, depending on when this airs, to Heather M. So, so glad that you're in our lives and happy birthday. Um, I can't wait to hang out and celebrate. And Beth H., Happy birthday to you, my almost birthday twin, and I hope you're doing well living your life down in the, at the beach. So, okay, update on rivalry week from when we last spoke. So we had gone, we, my husband and I were going up to tech to, um, to the game, and th- that whole experience was super fun. It went by way too fast, and um, I just need to, I need a do over or we need to go back again. Cause he didn't even get to see the campus really. Cause it's just so big. But anyway, tech didn't exactly perform maybe as, as they should have. And, and, and West Virginia did. So it did, it ended in a loss, but there was so much fun had it didn't even matter to me. At least I do have some visuals of what you can get at the concession stands when you're there in lane stadium. And you will see my friend here chowing down on a turkey leg. My husband overall on his first visit there, and it was not very sunny, so that also makes a huge difference, said it was an eight out of 10, which is great because he is like ridiculously over the top about his own school. So for him to say it was an eight is pretty solid. And he didn't even see the rest of the campus. So that was super fun. Um, Came home the next day, and then Friday, we had what shouldn't have been really a rivalry game, but um, our team beat the number one team in that particular league um, in school soccer. And not to brag, but my son, all, you know, 135 pounds of him, was a fucking animal out there, like He was making shit happen and they won and it was really, really great. And what was really sweet was that at the end of the game, when everyone like storms the field and it's super fun and exciting, his twin sister finds him, of course, and goes and gives him a huge hug. And instead of like pushing her away or like flicking her off or whatever, he actually embraced her and then gave her like the pat pat. So... It was a re- really great moment, and my husband actually got it on film, so that was exciting because that rarely happens. Um, so that was a win. Uh, let's see. So tomorrow, oh, and then my husband took my younger son down to a different football game on Saturday, and the Tar Heels I don't think showed up either. So there was that, but they also had a lot of fun. And then yesterday we had a family birthday party for the two 18 year olds and we have to split the family because it's just too big and it's too chaotic for me to actually have everyone there because it gives me a lot of anxiety. And fortunately we were having this great outdoor party and then this happened. So if you listen to the pod, you know, my twins just turned 18 and we're having this little like get together outside, you know, because the weather's so great on Sunday afternoon with the extended family. Um, it's been beautiful, like not a cloud in the sky, no calling for rain, like beautiful temps. And um, three minutes before, literally three minutes before people are showing up. That's thunder. It's pouring. Fucking ridiculous. Which was kind of a damper, literally. But, you know, in fucking ridiculous world, it happens to all of us and you just move on. In the news, there have been some weird and like just silly things happening. One of which is 
Adam Levine from Maroon 5 has, who allegedly he's had affairs and he has married, I guess. And um, they just announced that they're, he and his wife are expecting their third child. And he was basically asked a girl that allegedly he had an affair with if he could use her first name to name this kid. I was like, well, that is just plain weird. Like, why would anyone do that? If you like the name, just use it. What is she going to say? Like, you can, I, no one has like, I don't know. It was just weird and funny. And I think that that was a really shitty move on his part because now everyone thinks he's a philanderer. I think that's the right word to use. But anyway, whatever, Adam Levine. Um, okay, so update on September. September is still really sucking the life out of me, as you can see. But you know what? I don't think I'm alone in this. I think everybody is like struggling to keep up and they, you know, we're all doing the best we can. This morning at 7.30, the drainage stuff started. So th we're getting the new sub, sub pump, sump pump. I, I don't even know how to spell that, but it's exciting stuff. So hopefully we will have no more swampland in part of our yard this weekend. I totally got caught up on House of Dragons and I took the advice of someone and I actually rewatched all the episodes because I could. And you miss so much, so you must go back and, and see them. And I'm totally up to speed, very excited. I was so excited that I took my nerdiness to a new level where I have like four hockey podcasts that I listen to. Now I'm currently listening to the House of Dragons podcast. And the coolest thing about this is that like, they give you like all the backstory on people. They even like tell you where like people are from and where they are, you know, in Westeros and the kingdom, the what they're, I still don't know what the Red Keep is, but whatever, that's fine. Anyway, two very funny stories came out of that though. The first one was that um, there's a scene when they're like in like basically a brothel or like a pleasure house and the extras that were in that scene were like naked and having to like do stuff for like 12 hours when the rest of like the cast was, you know, clothed, which I thought, man, what are you signing? Do you know what you're signing up for there? Do you get paid extra for that? I don't know. I don't know if I necessarily would have signed up for that, but if exposure is what you're looking for, they got it. They got it in spades. Oh, my three September goals for eight days. Just a little update on those. Um, if you recall, I'm really good at ideas, I think. Um, not as great on follow through. That's for sure a fact. The first one of getting up when I'm supposed to get up, like not snoozing, I'm doing okay with the exception of the two weekend days where I didn't set an alarm and I actually slept really late. So I didn't mean to, but that I didn't technically have a time to wake up. So that was good. Um, I am crushing it in the mornings by getting stuff done. My dog is finally allowing me to actually like walk her maybe past two houses for her to go to the bathroom because now the weather is, is she approves of it. Um, so that's good. Um, and I am not succeeding in not pissing people off in my house before they leave. So that's a definite. So I think I might just table that one and just like, just work on the getting up and just focus on one. That That's, that's the plan for there. Okay. So at this family party during the quasi hurricane that we had, the SG, for those of you who don't know, the SG is slutty Graham. The SG asked if she could slow down the podcast. And I was like, what do you mean? I, I, I guess I talk fast. And so if you think I talk fast, like I listen to podcasts at like a one and a half or a two, because I'm ready to roll. I, I, I gotta get through this stuff. And then if I miss something, I just go back. But you can slow down a podcast. And if I, you just go into the settings or Google it, but if you need help, DM me and I'll help you. On that note, if you just want to share this with like, I don't know, three of your favorite friends, maybe even five of your favorite friends, if they think it's funny, that'd be awesome. Also, we are about to move into October, which we all know is like the best month ever. Um, I was going to start calling it Hocktober for like hockey month, but it kind of sounds like someone's trying to spit a lube. So I'm not going to call it that, but just know that I did come up with that clever name, you know, because it's kind of a nerd I am. Um, anyway, my husband and I are going tomorrow night 
to the first preseason game. I am super excited. Um, I have a picture of us last time I took him and he literally said, I don't think I've ever seen you happier than in this photo. And so, I mean, that's kind of sad and pitiful, but at the same time, awesome. So he's going to go teach. I'm going to go there and then he's going to meet me and it's going to be great. Oh, so two 18 year olds. Yeah. Um, I don't know how that happened. I literally had them like four years ago. So it's just weird how that, how that's come about. Um, I realize that I talk about my family and like make fun of them a lot. And, and don't get me wrong. They make fun of me too. They absolutely do. But I really do love them. And so I thought we'd talk about some family stuff or family this episode. Now, one thing I did want to give you a tip for those of you with younger kids or maybe older kids, I don't even know. I read that Disney is coming out with their own like trading cards or or like not playing cards for like card games, but like uh, all I can think of would be like baseball cards or like a Pokemon card because Pokemon's gotten really big again. I feel like it goes up and down and up and down and people like want them and then they give them away and then they want them back and whatever. So they are coming out with their own trading cards. If your kids are at all into cra- trading cards or you think that they might be, or if you just want to have the new next best thing, go get them now because I bet by the time it's time for them to go for Christmas, they'll be all jacked up in, in price and it'll be hard to find. So you'll be the, like the coolest parent ever. So that kind of leads me to this whole thing on, I, I think I said last week how, you know, one child like wants to celebrate the birthday and basically would maybe share baby Jesus's birthday with him and then go back to celebrating her. Apple does not fall far from the tree there. I recognize this. The other one is like, can we just please let this day go by? So when you're trying to come up with gifts for people, it's harder now. And I think it's less, I try to give like a thoughtful gift, but it's really hard when they don't need anything. Because back in the day, you used to just like, you'd be like, I want that Barbie. I want that Barbie so bad. And that was on your list of things. Like you were like that, if I don't get anything for my birthday, I just want the Barbie or I just want the race car or I just want the um, Millennium Falcon so that I can like piece that thing together, you know? Um, And now if people want things, they just go and get them. And so it's harder. And so it got me thinking like about how we spend our money and, and like, you know, when you're in relationships, what you value, um, and what you would go without. And one of my kids, I cannot figure out for the life of me what he values as far as like, um, uh, some kind of commodity because, he really isn't into fashion. He really doesn't care um, about like brand names of any sort. He is fine driving Tina, his like car, but it goes and it's, you know, doing the job. Um, He doesn't really like to leave the house that much. You could give him um, a lifetime supply to Chipotle, and I think he'd be happy with that. But like, it's I, I don't know what to do for him. And then the other one, she does not know the difference between a dollar bill and a fifty dollar bill. So she wouldn't know the difference between like uh, one of those gems from the gumball machine and like a Tiffany ring. So it's a it's a quandary. I know this is a first world problem, but still. So I've been racking my brain on trying to get what we should do for gifts for these kids. So originally my daughter wanted for her 18th birthday, she wanted to number one, get a nose ring, number two, get a tattoo, and number three, dye her hair. And so I, this was like a year ago, she started talking about it. So I was like, hey, listen, you know, tattoo, I think you have to be 18 and that's going to be a harder sell you know, well, let's, let's talk about the nose ring and, and dying hair. Okay, fine. So we get closer and closer and closer. And she's like, I really, really want a nose ring. I really want a nose ring. I'm like, okay, well, she loves YouTubing anything. And she will look at people getting braces. She'll get people getting shots, not shots, but needle shots. So anyway, I said, we'll do some research and look at like people getting nose rings. Cause I'm sure that's on there. And you know, 
talk to some people that have them and, 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 you know, I'm fine with it if you're fine with it. So what I did not realize is that my husband was not at all fine with that. He was like, yeah, no, that's not happening. And she's like, dad. And then he looks to me because now I'm the bad guy. Cause I'm like, I don't care. It's no big deal to me. So then she's like, okay, well forget that. I'll just get a tattoo. And my husband's like, absolutely not. And I was like, well, you know, you do have an aversion to needles. So you might want to research tattoos and figure out how that works because I can almost guarantee that's going to hurt. And all I could think of was that like episode on Friends where, um, and for those of you who don't know what Friends are, it's a TV show that was like wildly popular back in the day. So uh, there are a lot of reruns. Hopefully you've seen one. But two of the girls were going to go get tattoos together and one gets a tattoo and the other one comes out basically with like a, a freckle. And she's like, oh my God, it hurts so bad. I couldn't do it. That's what I imagine my daughter doing if she went to get a tattoo. She'd be like, get a little freckle. She'd be like, ah, this hurts so bad. No. So I knew she would chicken out of that. But my husband was like, absolutely not. So then she's like, well, okay, I want to dye my hair pink. And my husband's like, why would you dye your hair pink? you've got beautiful hair. Like, no. And so I finally have to sit him down. I'm like, look, there are going to be a lot of things in this life that this child is not going to experience or get to do. Dyeing her hair and a nose ring are totally temporary. Like she could get it and two days later, take that sucker out. No big deal. That dye, we could wash out. Hair grows. No big deal. The tattoo, ain't no way she's getting a tattoo because she's not going near a needle. So, I mean, these are not big issues, right? She's chickened out of all of them. So now we were left with getting her a special necklace from her dad and we got her some claws, some hair claws. Yeah. And she was like, what else? Anyway, so my son wants for nothing, needs nothing, which means to me that we are doing an fantastic job parenting and providing all of the um, items that he may need in his life. So I had to really dig deep. So I found like a little like g gaming chair. And so we we bought that for him. And um, when he opened it yesterday, I swear to you, it looks like it is made for a four-year-old. Like it's so narrow that it's a good thing that he's a slight kid because I, I don't even think my ass would fit on this chair. It is so narrow. Like I didn't get it from like the tot store or whatever. I don't know what to do with that. Then he gets this other gift from us and he's like, oh, this is heavy. Wow. What, a, you know, what could this be? Um, it's a pull-up bar. Okay. Never ever is that going to be used, but we really did have a good laugh over that. The only other thing that I could have done if I could find it is my family has a longstanding tradition of re-gifting um, certain things that we get from that like auction thing we do at um, Christmas and the shake weight is number one, number one with a bullet. If you don't know what the shake weight is, go look it up. It was very big on the home shopping network. I think my mom bought it one time and gifted it. And it has made the rounds. And nobody, except for me and my brother, like it when we get the shade weight. Another thing that I really enjoy doing is, um, since I don't feel like people really listen to me in my household, sometimes I'll just like buy a book or like a poster or something. It's just something to like give, give food for thought. And so in the past, I have purchased a book called How to Be a Person, and that's just, you know, basically just trying to to just illustrate in kind of a cute, cartoony way how to not be an asshole, you know, in life. Um, maybe help someone across the street or with their groceries, you know, that, that, that say thank you, say please. Um, another one that I, I bought was um, about manners, which that has literally cobwebs all over it. So that's no not going anywhere. So this time I got found this book and it's like, how to be a man. And um, the, the, the title says like, how to impress a girl, how to change a flat tire. 
and then a couple of other things because it sold me on how to impress a girl and how to change flat tire because I was like, if you know how to change a flat tire, that will impress a girl. I'm telling you right now, at least it would for me. I mean, I, I don't know. So that was probably the one gift that he laughed the most at because he was like, yeah, between this and the pull-up bar, you guys just wasted your money. Which leads me to what we spend our money on. My husband and I are very different, like very different. And that's so good for so many reasons, but he doesn't understand certain things that I spend my money on. And I definitely don't understand certain things that he spends his money on. So like, for instance, he does not seem to believe that like going to the gas station or the Sev or, you know, the coffee shop, like on the regular actually adds up to like, you know, 50 bucks a week. Whereas he's like, why in the world would you spend that much to get your hair done? Or why in the world would you spend that much on, you know, a pair of shoes? Now, to be fair, to be fair, they're running shoes because that's really all I'll spend like a certain amount of money on as far as shoes go. Because I'm really hard on shoes and I have to throw them away after a season. So I just can't spend more than like a hundred on them because that is just counterproductive. But so that's, so then it goes back to, for me, you have your trifecta and it's always a three where you've got like something costs a lot, it's high quality and it's convenient. Now you can always get two. You can rarely, rarely get three. And this is my illustration that I use. So think about the fresh market or like a Whole Foods or any of those kinds of like specialty stores where you know you're going to get like quality food and it's probably right at the street. So it's super easy to get to. You're going to leave that store after getting seven items, spending $95, like I never get out of there and it's usually seven items and it's usually like $97, you know, sometimes I'm trying to keep it, you know, and you leave there thinking like, ow, I got a foot on my ass, but you have something for dinner and it's really close to home. Then people are like, what about Trader Joe's? And I'm like, mm, I don't go to Trader Joe's. And of course now I'm the dumbass. Trader Joe's is out very far. It's a small store. And it's extremely crowded. So while the prices are good and maybe the quality of the food is supposedly good, it is not convenient for me. And it gives me so much anxiety even thinking about it that I'm like, I actually am just going to have to shop at the other stores because I can't do it. I just can't do it. My husband, on the other hand, he doesn't really go to the grocery store that often. So when he does, he comes home with the food group that ends in O, which is Dorito, Frito, Cheeto, Tostito. That's his food group. And then he'll come home with like pimento cheese, port wine cheese, and onion dip. And if anyone knows me, you know, I loathe onions. I hate them. I hate them in everything. They infect everything. I like have to exercise and sweat more just to get the onion taste out of me if for some reason they slide into something. So um, I don't know. It's just weird. I just was thinking about like how different we all are in our family, but I still strive so hard to like get that perfect gift or like do that perfect thing. And, and sometimes I'm, I hit it and sometimes a lot of the time I don't. Another thing that like irritates the hell out of me, but my husband like literally has like not a care in the world about it. He's like, why are you wasting your time? Would be convenience fees. Okay. I refuse on principle to pay a convenience fee to a bank when I'm trying to get my own money out. Like that is totally fucked up to me. And Chris couldn't care less. He's like, I need cash. I'm going to do, you know, it, it, he doesn't dispute this at all. Like a late fee for a credit card payment where, you know, there's no reason to be late when you know it's coming. It's just, you just forget. So you set a reminder like a normal person would. He does not do that. And so I was going through and I was looking, I was like, oh, finance charge, finance charge. I will dispute. I will get on the chat and I'll be like, I am a good customer. I do not, I, I will not. I will really fight hard on that, on that one. He doesn't care. He's like, well, you know, whatever. So convenience, quality, price. Everybody's got their stuff. My son, not the best sharer in the world, 
So you can imagine what he holds. Uh, it's all about price and probably convenience because he really doesn't even like to leave the house that much. And not so deep thoughts. Um, because of the sunglasses, you can tell I'm tired and I'm just, I'm struggling today. But for me, number one, I love the season change. I love, love, love the fact that um, it falls coming and I'm pretty soon going to be able to like put my own clothes on and it's going to be great. Like I'll be able to wear a sweater. Um, so yay. Um, Hallmark Channel. That means like Harvest Moon movies. It means like fall festival movies, it, going into the holidays. I love Hallmark Channel. My husband thinks it's ridiculous. And I am like, you know, for those of us who suffer during the holidays of like a lot of anxiety and, and maybe even some sadness, why not rely on some good old clean Canadian happy endings? Not that kind. Not that kind because Hallmark doesn't dabble in that. It's all very clean. But anyway, I don't currently have the Hallmark channel because we change streaming stuff, but I might have to find it just for at least November and December. Number two. <laughs> it's funny that I said number two when I'm about to say every room spray. <laughs> every bathroom should have room spray. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Number two. I, I didn't mean to time it that way, but it is the second one that I thought of. So this does carry over into every bathroom should have a room spray in it, particularly because of the number two. But when you live in a household with a lot of males, you just need the spray. So do yourself a favor. Just bite the bullet. If you, Even if you don't want to buy the room spray, like get it at the dollar store. I don't care. Get room spray. It will help us all. Number three. Okay. If you chew gum, you need to wrap the gum in like a wrapper or a tissue or something so that it doesn't like, don't put it in the wastebasket when there's no liner or anything, because then guess what? Some poor soul, i.e. the mom or the custodial staff have to go and dig out the dried gum that's stuck. It's an adhesive. It sticks. It doesn't, maybe it doesn't bother other people. It does bother me. So anyway, there's that. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. It's like the unlucky 13. I can't get my shit together, clearly. Um, my husband has a really hard time following me sometimes, and I apparently have a hard time following myself. So if you understood anything in this and you took anything away from it, great. Um, thank you. So hopefully there will be some visuals in here with pictures and videos that might make you laugh more. So next week, I uh, will be in October, and I bet you I'm going to look different. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like an improvemental state in my entire being because we'll be out of September and into October. Until then, keep keep working through it. It's going to be fine. <laughs>